friends and uh, welcome to Edupedia World Videos. This is the course Linux Operating System Basics and in this particular video what we are going to do is we will be learning how to set up your virtual machine. Once we have installed our operating system on it, now we need to do various configurations. So we will learn how to use the desktop of Linux, how to use the CentOS basic uh, genome UI in interface, that environment. We'll get familiar with it and we'll also learn how to configure network on our system. So what will that help us to do is one thing that it will help us to connect our virtual machine to the internet. Okay. The second thing is that it will also help us to con connect our to our virtual machine from the console using our windows. So the benefit to that is that you can open mul multiple sessions from your windows and you can do the actual programming stuff and that is how you actually work in the production environment you open a console uh, console client ssh client so that protocol is known as ssh which is secured shell okay so secured shell is nothing but a remote way to connect to a linux operating systems shell so what is a shell shell is the default command line interface interpreter for Linux. So there are various types of shells, K shell, C shell, but the most popular shell and the one that we will use is the bash. Okay, so we had also done a little bit about shells while we were learning about the Linux operating systems, about the basics for the Linux operating system. Now we will see how to use uh, the shell okay first what we'll do is we will just power on our virtual machine for that I'll just select my virtual machine which is over here VM1 and I'll press on start button so it will st start the boot up process for my virtual machine which you can see that has it has begun now so I'll select the operating system that I have to boot you have to select the first option okay, by default CentOS 7 bootloader gives you two options the first one is for the normal boot mode and the second one is for the rescue mode so in case you have lend ended into some trouble with your operating system so you can log into the rescue mode and see if things work from there you can just uh, correct whatever the problem is and then you can get your desktop back okay so now the uh, graphical user interface is almost done loading so my cursor you can see is there on the screen so now there is the login prompt so I will log in using the root user because I want to configure network and I must have the sufficient privileges to do so so I'll click on the not listed option so generally the root user is not listed for security purposes okay so you have to just click the not listed option and manually enter the username root then click on next last for password enter your password that you use that you configured when you installed your CentOS operating system okay so now the desktop would appear and uh, this is our desktop and you can say that it is pretty much similar to the Windows desktop the only difference that I can see over here is that the menu bar is appearing at the top of the screen right uh, rather than the bottom of the screen so this uh, uh, it is just an alternative to Windows start menu in Windows you call it start menu and here you would call it as genome panel so in this you can see that there are two icon two options over here one is the applications so which lists all the applications which are installed into my system and these are within classified within various categories and then you have places which is nothing but to navigate throughout your files in your system which is a file explorer so you can go to various places from here and you can explore your computer and apart from that you have a sound option over here where you can adjust your sound sound settings then there is a network options and the power options and the clock is over here and when you click the clock it will open the calendar and at the top right corner of the screen you can see is the username listed and you can click it so you can either shut down 
or log out or lock the screen. You can also update your system from over here. Okay, so there are various options that the default desktop gives you. Now we'll move ahead with the network configuration. So what I have to do to do the network configuration is that I have to con click on this icon over here and you can see the wired button is uh, coming over here. So first thing before that, uh, what we have to do is we also have to select our network adapter. Okay, so for that I have just restored my uh, virtual machine window so, uh, so that I can show you this icon over here which is a network icon and this right clicking this icon you will be able to go to the network settings of your virtual machine. Okay, from here you can connect or disconnect your adapter and from here you can go to the network settings of your virtual machine network adapter. So right now I have connected a bridged adapter to it. So there are various types of adapters. One is the NATing adapter in which your virtual machine will use the same IP address as that of your host machine. But we do not need that one because we need a def uh, we need to configure a different IP address. So we will use a bridged adapter in case of your bridged adapter your virtual machine IP address remains different separate from your physical machines IP address so both are separately accessible over the network and here in the adapter name you have to select the correct adapter so if you are using Wi-Fi you have to select your wireless adapter like I have selected over here in case you are connecting to the internet using your LAN cable then you have to use Realtek PCE uh, or whatever Ethernet adapter you have on your system okay but right now I have to use Wi-Fi then just click on OK so this will make sure that your adapter is now connected to the virtual machine and o available over there so that is why when I click over here I can see the wired option here now go to the network settings and you can view rest of the settings like the IP address and all over here so here what actually happens is in CentOS 7 they have given you the ability to configure different network profiles so suppose you want to use a different IP address or different network settings when you are at home and in your office your uh, IT guys have configured a particular IP for your system uh, what you otherwise would be doing is you would go to the office then enter the static IP address manually and all the other configuration stuff like the subnet mask gateways and DNS servers and all and when you come back you will again reset it according to your home configuration so at home generally people use DHCP that is the dynamic host control protocol which will do nothing but automatically take a IP address on lease from your wireless router and configure the network for you so you don't have to worry much about your network settings but in the offices generally that is not the case because IT has to look into the security stuff and that is why they allocate different IP addresses to different systems so to do this thing to and fro every day changing the settings from one network to another takes a big time and it is a big task big overhead for you to do so for an alternative to this approach CentOS 7 gives you the ability to configure various profiles so you can add a profile from over here okay and if you want to add a profile for your home network you can add it that way if you want to add a profile for your office network you can add it that way so suppose this is a uh, auto ethernet this is the default profile that gets created once you enable your wired connection from over here it will get created and it will get activated by default so you can go to the settings by clicking this gear icon over here and you can go to the IPv4 settings and here you can enter your IP address net mask and gateway whatever in case this is set to DHCP then it will pull up this IP address and rest of the information from your wireless router or your LAN router whatever server is available to allocate an IP address otherwise if you want to do manual setting you can go over here and enter each of these details separately and click apply so once you apply that that particular profile information gets updated into the system so now once this information is updated 
Okay, suppose we create a new profile over here. We go to add profile and we create a new profile. So first of all, I have to go to identity. You can put specify a name for this profile. Let me name it as Office Wi-Fi. Okay, and then you have to click, select a network adapter. So right now I have only one network adapter configured. So I'll be selecting that one. Okay, after that you go to IPv4 and here you can either choose automatic or you can choose manual configuration if you choose manual configuration you can enter all the information that you want to add manually or you can rather go for DHCP so in my case I want to pick up all the settings from the network itself so I'll select DHCP and I'll click add so once this network profile is added it will display over here in your network connections you can see over here that office Wi-Fi is available but how to activate it to activate it you will have to open the terminal so what is the terminal we had earlier also done that terminal is the default client which Linux gave you for accessing its command line interface CLI just like CMD or command prompt in Windows there is a terminal in Linux so to open the terminal either go to applications and then you have to go to uh, where is the terminal so here yeah, you can find it in favorites also and apart from the favorites it might be here inside utilities then there is terminal option so another shortcut way of doing this is that just right click on your lap uh, desktop and click open in terminal So this will take you to a terminal window okay so now this is the terminal window and here you have to another option you have another option of configuring your network okay which is known as your network management tool user interface NMT UI so using this NMT UI there is a small um, legacy UA, UI that you can see over your terminal so here you can either edit a connection just similar things that we did from the GUI mode you can do it from here also to select two various options to navigate through various options you have to use the up and down arrow key and whichever option is highlighted on pressing enter that option will be selected and you will go into that option and if you want to utilize various uh, features which are given on the right menu pane so you have to press the right arrow key and it will take you to right side and then you can go up and down and whatever you want to do you can do from here so I'll run this network tool again and I'll go to the activate a connection option to select a particular profile so just navigate using the down arrow key press enter and it will show you all the profiles so right now auto ethernet is activated which you can see from the small asterisk or star symbol over here now I want to activate say my office profile or office Wi-Fi profile so I'll navigate to that then go towards right so you can see that on the left office Wi-Fi is selected because it is highlighted and on the right I can now select either activate or quit okay so I'll navigate to activate using the up and down arrow keys once that is highlighted I'll press enter and this profile will get activated so you can verify that first quit it and then you can run NMT UI tool again and go to activate a connection here you can see that office Wi-Fi is activated similarly I can verify it from here also go to network settings and you can see that the office Wi-Fi settings is actually the one which is now selected earlier this tick mark was coming in front of the auto Ethernet now it is not coming over there it is coming over office Wi-Fi settings just next to the profile name over here now you can check whether your computer is connected to the internet or not by running your browser so go to the internet go to applications go to internet and there you will find this old and familiar Firefox web browser icon So just click on it and Firefox will start once the window opens up we will just try and connect to google.com and we'll see if the internet is accessible on the system or not so www.google.com so since Google is available so we can see that it is running so internet is running on my virtual machine okay so that step has been done now network is configured now in our next video we'll see how to connect our virtual machine remotely 
okay from any other device any other PC on the network or we can also connect it from our Windows operating system okay so that we'll see in our next video I hope you understood whatever we did in this particular video and continue to watch the course Linux operating system basics to learn more about Linux thank you Thank you.